and welcome. I'm the Retro Apparel Guy. Now today, I'm doing a review, but don't turn it off right away. I'll tell you why. I think this is an important review. Um, Kiwi reached out to me and asked me if I'd review this digital multimeter of theirs. Uh, now, of course, I said yes for many reasons. First of all, uh, I use a tool like this every single day. Uh, and on top of that, many people write to me and ask me what kind of a meter I use, what kind of scope, what kind of tools. Uh, so I figured it'd be the perfect opportunity to review this tool. Um, now, the thing is, spoiler alert, I already knew who Kiwi was. I already have one of their multimeters, and I did like this multimeter. But if you want to see how you can use it in your everyday household, uh, as well as with all the electronics, and if even if you're an electrician, um, stick around, we can take a look at all the features uh, right on the bench. So opening up the box, we see that we have this nice hardcover case. Inside, we find the test leads. as well as two sets of batteries and um, uh, a test uh, meter for the, I believe this is the temperature, temperature rating. Okay, so for the meter itself, there's a case, a protective case all around it. Very nice little case, also quite sturdy. It's pretty much as good as uh, cases you get on cell phones. All right, so there's just a little screw to undo here. Removing the screw will remove the battery cover somehow. But there you go, just like that. After which we remove the four screws here to remove the cover. So here we see that the board um, there's actually two uh, PC boards. So I'm not sure why they decided to do it this way and separate everything. Um, but everything looks clean and professional. And speaking of clean and professional boards, we'd like to take our sponsor, PCBWay. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They make great quality PCBs from your Gruber files starting at only $5. All standard PCBs have now been upgraded for free from TG13140 heat resistance to TG150. If you're in need of getting your own PCBs manufactured at reasonable prices for production runs or simply a one-off PCB, they offer excellent quality and unsurpassed service to help you with your designs and free online quotes. And with their quick order feature, your parameters are automatically set from your Gerber files. With fast turnaround times and fast delivery, I definitely recommend checking them out. The link is in the description below. So as I was saying, the only problem is the two boards. I see that um, the way it was designed, it looks like, first of all, the, the two boards are connected by these connectors here, here and here. Um, it looks like some of it was retouched after here. It looks like some soldering was retouched, not here, uh, as well as these wires were added after. So maybe some uh, error in design or something, uh, and they forgot to do these connections here. And I don't like little wires like that. They break and they, oh, I, they're really thin. So this is one thing I don't like, but the rest of the, of the board is really nice, as well as having uh, two very good quality uh, fuses here that are ceramic and they pack the sand inside so otherwise that's all there is to see for the inside so we'll go ahead and just close it back up everything snaps pretty easy back into place much easier to put back together than it was taking it apart well also you can't really make an, a mistake here um in the long screws are four of them that go here and the short screw is the screw that goes for the middle here so you can't really make a mistake with that either now i'm not sure why every time you put the batteries in 
it comes on right away. This is a little bit annoying. I mean, it's okay, but I just wonder why it's not off by default, why it's on by default as soon as you put batteries uh, instead of just turning on the unit. But whatever, it's no big deal. It's as simple as that. No. Yeah, it's that ooh, 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 ah. Yeah, it's that ooh, 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 ah. Yeah, it's that ooh, 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 ah. Now, ain't this something? All right, so automatically it's on. Um, there's a power button here, which I guess you have to hold for three seconds. It shuts it off. Now, setting aside the meter for a second, um, I want to show you the test leads. They're actually really, really good quality. Uh, very thick wire here. So this is a 20 gauge wire. Very nice and thick. So this is great uh, for electrician use as well. I'm going to put it back in this case for now. So I do want to share something with you, and this is my personal experience. When I first found out about Kiwits, I was impressed for various reasons, okay? First of all, like everyone, I went to research them on the internet. Um, I found this guy who made some tests of Kiwit versus, um, you know, Fluke. And all the measurements were very accurate. They were the same on both units. So that impressed me right off the bat. I looked at the company, you know, their profile, everything. They have a nice website. Uh, they actually make tools, only tools. So that was impressive too. Because you know how some companies, they make tools, they make this, they make that, they make microphones. No, 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 no. All they do is tools, which that I like. So they specialize. I, I think that this company, and I'm not saying that for them to raise the price, but I think that this company is taking a less larger uh, profit than they, you know, than other companies um, because they want to get known as well. So when I bought my multimeter and I was very reluctant, I paid $45 for it Canadian. So that scared me a little bit. Uh, but when I got it, and I have to say it's similar to this, okay? When I got it, the quality, the feel, uh, was there right the feel of the probes the feel of the unit the heavy everything it, the quality was there and it's the same with this right off the bat you're getting a hardcover case really beautiful you open it up you get your batteries you get your probes everything and the probes are not cheap probes okay these 20 dollar units that you buy normally the probes are falling apart the wires just pull out not with this these are quality probes similar to the ones i had on fluke and of course the same ones i have on my other uh, meter and they are strong they're sturdy they have uh you know um the extra caps that go over you have everything they give you your batteries they give you everything plus what i really like about both units um they have a protective case now i don't know if you can see here it comes off um which protects the unit in case of falling in case of anything and um it's beautiful all around okay they make nice quality stuff the, the buttons everything that you uh touch everything feels of quality so i just wanted to share that with you uh and i'm very happy uh about that for kiwis what i like about the auto is that when you're with anything with voltage it seems to react pretty quickly it, it does react quickly. It, it knows its voltage and uh, it gives you the measurements right away. So I really like that. So when it comes to the capacitors, um, you know, they're a bit tight. So as you'll notice, it measures the resistance of the capacitor. Now it's normal capacitors have resistance. However, it should be switching to the capacitor, uh, you know, icon here, and it should be measuring the capacitance of the capacitor, which is not doing. I've got to select it manually, which is fine. That's what I do on my other meter. Then it takes a second, and it will measure the capacitance. So in this case, it's detecting 633, 634 uh, microfarads, and this is a 680 microfarads. So this is fine. However, 
the auto the, the auto mode, I should say, sort of fails um, in in that sense. It's not a complete complete failure because it's true it does have resistance, but it should be measuring uh, the capacitance and not the resistance. So when comparing to their other meter here, you're going to see um, they give you the same quality probes. This one has a uh, holder, which I really like, a, a very sturdy case as well. So this one is more portable. This one is really for a bench. This one doesn't have a, a holder and it doesn't because so that that's a little bit annoying because if you want to set it like this when you're working, you can't. OK, uh, this is meant to be carried around, either uh, put on its back wherever you're working. Um, there's nowhere to hang it, nothing. Uh, whereas this one, I really like the fact that I, I can hang it. Uh, and as well as, like I said, it has this and I have a place to uh, put my probes in when I'm done. So I really, really, really like uh, this on the on their other um, on their other multimeter, which doesn't have here. But the fact that this is digital and it's got the uh, the auto on it, that's pretty cool too. So you know, give and take. There's a few things you're, you're getting and a few things you're you're losing. Uh, but otherwise, you see the this, the display here uh, is just as clear, and I do have a light that I can select as well that I can remove. So I, I like that also compared to their old one. So just little comparison here. Um, but on a bench, I do prefer their, their older ones on a bench. I want to do the capacitor test with the other multimeter first, just so I can see the difference. Now it's set on capacitance. Taking a second, it's reading 654. Uh, 650 uh, and this is a 680. Now let's switch and you saw how long it takes. Oh, and you see for a second it actually switched to capacitor instead of resistance. But as I said before, this is a problem. So we're just going to switch over manually to capacitance. It's taking a little bit longer. It's reading at 633, and again, this is a 680 microfarad. So it's off from this one, and I uh, I do trust this one, even though I, I don't use it for capacitor. I have another uh, machine altogether for capacitors uh, that's pretty accurate. Um, so either way, um, I'm just comparing with the two here and uh, as you see I have to s absolutely set it to the manual mode otherwise it doesn't seem to detect uh, the microfarads it, it, it detects the resistance instead um, and compared to this one it's a little bit slower and the reading is off so let's maybe try it one more time And again, 630. So uh, that's basically the difference between uh, the two. So I don't like the capacitance reading uh, on this, um, whether it's more accurate than this one or not. Uh, that's not the issue here. The issue is uh, how long it takes and the fact that you have to put it to manual uh, compared to this one. But either way, um, I think it's a little bit quicker on this one, but not a big deal because it's not something you use that often on the multimeter, uh, but uh, it, it is, it's, it's still working when you need it. Okay, so another function here, well, button, um, is called the APO. This is called the automatic power off function according to the manual, uh, which means that by default, the meter is set to have this thing on. So what it does is after 15 minutes of inactivity, um, it will shut off at the 14 minute, it will warn you uh, to tell you, it'll warn five beeps to tell you in one minute from now, I will be shutting off. So 15 minutes of inactivity, it shuts off complete, completely, which I have this on my other meter as well. You can, however, select off and the meter will stay on. Uh, so for whatever reason, if you're testing something, whatever, and you don't want it to auto power off, uh, that function is there. You see it lights here and then you turn it off, it shuts off. So that's another uh, button that there is here.
So there's another little function called the NCV. Now NCV, um, I don't know what the NC is for, I'm sorry, but voltage um, obviously is the V. The thing is, is that it's to detect voltage, okay? Uh, so the um, voltage detection, it's, it's exactly like using those little electrician tools. Uh, you gotta set it to, uh, it doesn't work in auto mode, so you gotta set it in manual mode. So you set it to NCV Live. On NCV Live, and then it'll tell you here, when you're touching the wire, that it's detecting high voltage. Now, it's not crazy sensitive. As you see, if I, I, I just go close, I really have to touch the wire, which is in a way is good because I've got some electrician tools that are extremely sensitive, that even if you're stepping on a wire, or even if the breaker is off, or there's a wire next to it, uh, it'll detect it. So those are crazy, uh, you know, very, very sensitive. In a way, that's good that this is not, uh, but it will tell you that there is some voltage. But I never rely on, on, on just those, you know. I mean, I always make sure the breakers are off or everything, but, um, you know, when you're on the road or anything, or you have this in your tool case, it is useful, it can detect uh, voltage, whether it's low or high voltage, uh, by setting it to manual mode. I don't know why exactly that doesn't work on uh, uh, on auto mode. I, I can't explain it or why, but at least um, it, it, when you set it to manual mode, it does work and it seems to be working uh, fine. So back to auto mode, we were detecting some um, voltage from a battery before. Uh, so let's see the AC voltage. It's switching just as fast to AC voltage, and it does say here that it's AC. It does recognize it right away as AC voltage, and it's very fast in, uh, in responding to that. So let's do it again. It's scanning, put my probes in, switches right away, it's telling me there's 120 volts on the line, 118, 119, that's normal, but these are 120 volts uh, line where we are here. Okay, so for this last test here, um, for the probe that detects the temperature, uh, believe it or not, I let the water run <laughs> for a while and it's still, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. I don't even want to know. Thank God I have a filter on my fridge and everywhere else. Uh, this is the clean water, beautiful, coming to you from Montreal, Canada. Very fresh, fresh water. Um, okay. So, now it's, yeah, I gotta switch it. That's another thing that doesn't work on auto mode. But if you switch it to Celsius slash Fahrenheit, you put your probes here, which either way it tells you, by the way, again, where to put your probes. It flashes, I really like that feature. Um, so you set it to uh, Celsius Fahrenheit, you stick it in the water, And you see right now it's telling me that it's 50, 53 uh, Fahrenheit or 11 degrees uh, Celsius. Now it is pretty cold around here, uh, so still <laughs> it's minus 10 outside today. Uh, so our pipes are pretty cold and the water that's coming in is pretty cold. I see the water's clearing up, thank God, but I'm still not going to drink it. Uh, so yeah, the probe is working and it's responding pretty quick as, as far as I can tell as well. I'm taking it out of the water and already the temperature... Uh, seems to be drop, dropping, actually going up. <laughs> Let's see. Let's drop it back into the water. Yeah, so it's responding very quickly and it seems to be working perfectly as well for the uh, temperature. So back to the auto mode. Uh, when I'm testing a resistor, this is something I'm not too happy about. Uh, it switched to the uh oh, excuse me to the continuity and i've got to switch it manually to ohms now it's it's an error and and not too happy about it okay it might be because it's a tiny resistor i don't know uh it's detecting that it's you know there's no resistance there maybe if it was a bigger one but i don't have one right now that's bigger um regardless you know i think it should have switched directly to uh, the ohms however uh, it is working properly. It is detecting a 47. It is a 47. It's just that the auto mode, and I'm not used to having auto mode anyways. I, I normally switch the wheel uh, to the proper, uh, you know, place that I need it. So 
But again, the auto mode did the same thing with the capacitance. Instead of going to capacitance for this, uh, it went into resistance, which again is not wrong because a capacitor has resistance, but it should have gone to capacitance. But it's great. The auto function is great when it comes to a battery uh, or any other uh, voltage because it knows automatically it's DC. It switched to DC and it tested it and it did the same thing with the AC when we tested the plug before. But for the uh, resistance and the capacitance, the auto mode you know, it's give and take. I mean, it, I, you know, I, I tried it a couple of times uh, on and off camera. And the thing is, is that it it, it worked once only where it did detect uh, that it was a resistance. So I don't know why that is. Like I said, it could be it's a bit too small. But otherwise, the, the function itself is working. It's just the auto mode, again, might need uh, some fine tuning. Okay, so for diode mode, it's basically the same thing that happens. As soon as you set a diode on it, I have so much fun with these. <laughs> so it switches to ohms. It's not switching to the diode mode. You, again, you got to go in manual mode and select diode. And there you're going to get a reading. So it, it's again, the auto mode is a bit wonky when it comes to these, uh, these extra things here. Uh, but again, I love it for the voltage. It switches right away and everything. Uh, but I've never used auto mode before on any multimeter. I just switch it, select it manually. So, uh, it is working. It's just the auto function again is not detecting uh, necessarily what it's supposed to detect. So I think we've been all around uh, the features pretty much. I mean, there is a, a couple of things that I'm not going to bother testing right now. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I can do a much more in-depth uh, testing of it. However, basically, I just want to say that I think the auto function is nice for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, you know, especially when it comes to voltage, it'll switch. It's a nice little thing also that it, it lights up to tell you, Hey, don't forget to put your probes here. So it's, it's a good little feature for beginners like that. Um, but it's not refined yet. As I said, for the capacitors, uh, resistance and diodes, as we saw, it is not refined yet where it's, it goes off on, um, the wrong selection. So, but for the rest, the meter itself is working very accurately. Uh, it detects very quickly uh, when it does detect when it's on the right thing, of course. Uh, so I, I do like it. It's pretty cool, but it does lack the uh, support for a workbench. So that's the other uh, complaint that I have. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little review. And I want to say that thank you, Weets, thank you so much for having sent this beautiful quality unit. Um, and I will be back with another restoration very soon. So if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, hit the notification button so you'll know as soon as I drop the video. Uh, and I just want to say, as always, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.